So in this video, I'm going to go over the Mach 5 review. So let's just jump right in. So it says in parallelogram ABCD, AD is equal to 15X minus 21, BC 7X plus 9, and DO is 4X minus 10. Find the measure of BD. So um, to find the measure of BD, we're going to have to look at some other things. So let's just look at some relationships here. So AD and BC are opposite sides in a parallelogram. So we know that these opposite sides are congruent. So that's one point that we know, okay? Then we also know um, that DO and BO uh, diagonals bisect each other. So we know that DO is congruent with BO. So that means if we're trying to find the length of that whole diagonal, then we can find, we can find X and then we can plug X into DO and multiply that by two. Um, so let's just go ahead and label what we have. This is 15X minus 21. And this is 7x plus 9. And what we're going to do is we're going to set these equal to each other because they are congruent. Once we find that, we're going to plug that at the, the value of x. We're going to plug that value of x back into do, and do is going to be there twice, right? Because it shows us up here, do is here, 4x minus 10. But because those are congruent, 4x minus 10 is also here. So we could do 4x minus 10 plus 4x minus 10. Um, or we can do 2 times 4x minus 10, okay? So either one of those. But first we're going to solve for x, okay? So we're going to do 15x minus 21 is equal to the 7x plus 9. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 7x from both sides. So now all our x's are gone from there. We have 8x over here. And then we're going to add 21 to both sides. So our 21's are gone over there. So we have that's equal to 30, right? And then we're going to divide both sides by 8. So when we divide both sides by 8, we get that x equals 3.75. Now what we need to do is we need to plug that 3.75 in for that x right there, okay? So what we're going to do is multiply that by 2 because we're looking for this whole length here, right guys? So we have two 4x minus 10s, right? So we're going to do 2 times 4x minus 10, and that's going to give us 8x minus 20, right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to plug this into right there, okay? So we're going to do 8 times 3.75 minus 20. You can put that in your calculator and do it exactly like that. Well, 8 times uh, 3.75 is 30. So this is equal to 30 minus 20, which means it's equal to 10, okay? And so that means if we did um, 4 times 3.75, um, minus 10, that would have given us 15, right? So, okay. Well, actually, it would have given us 5. So this is 5, and this is 5. So when we add those two together, they equal 10, okay? So that's why the answer is 10. All right, so this next one is a proof, okay? So it tells us, given that GHIJ is a rhombus, um, we're going to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So our first step is always given information. So we're going to write given right here. And we're going to mark that out, okay? And our last step is always what we're trying to prove. So we know that this is going to go right down here. Angle 1 is congruent with angle 3. And we're going to cross that out as well. Then it says, um, what statement would we write if we are saying that a rhombus is a parallelogram? Well, I think it's going to be this statement. Whoops. It's going to be the statement G-H-I-J-J-H, G-I-H-J is a parallelogram. So G-H-I-J is a parallelogram. It's going to go here. So now that's gone from there. Let's keep working through this proof. Now why could we say if the previous statement is G-H-I-J-J, G-H-I-J is a parallelogram, why could we say that G-H is parallel to J-I? That would be the definition of a parallelogram, wouldn't it be? Okay, so now our next step is talking about alternate interior angles theorem. So we'll look up here, tell me if you can find a pair of alternate interior angles. Well, the only angle statement we have left is angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and they are indeed alternate interior angles because these sides are parallel and there's our transversal, right? So angle one is congruent with angle two by the alternate interior angles theorem. 
So that one is our next statement. And the only thing that's left is our diagonals and a rhombus bisect opposite angles. And so where it says here that angle 2 is congruent with angle 3. It told us this is a rhombus, and one of our properties of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect opposite angles. So that means 2 is going to be congruent with 3. Okay, so that's why we can write this statement. So there we go. That's the final. Um, that's our final step in the proof because we already finished step six. Okay. So then um, number three says, given that EG, EF, and FG, GF are mid segments, so we're talking about that little triangle in the center. Identify which properties apply to this figure. Choose all that apply. Mid segments are double the size of the opposite side. That's not true. They're actually half, right? Mid segments are parallel to the opposite side. That is true. Um, this is parallel with this, right? Sorry, I should have done one there. I don't know what I was doing. Um, and if we keep working through the shape, this is parallel with this side. And our last side, actually, let's just choose a different color here. Let's go green. So that means this one is also parallel here, right? And not just with the side, but the parts of the side, right? Because those are the center of each of those sides. So then the mid segments are perpendicular to the opposite side. Oh, no, sorry. Part number C says that the mid segments um, are half the size of the opposite side. And this is true. And we know that this is the same as these down here, right? We know that G GF is the same as BE and ED. We know that um, EF here is the same as BG and G GC. And we know, let's get, if we can go back to our green here, maybe, if I can get it to go to green. Um, we know that GE, three ticks here, is congruent with CF and FD. Okay, those are all properties that we know, so that is also true. Um, and then mid segments are perpendicular. Well, that's not true. They are parallel, but they are not perpendicular. Perpendicular means they form a right angle, so that's not true. So this one was not true. Per the perimeter of the mid segment of a triangle is half the perimeter of the whole triangle. So the perimeter of the mid segment, so that means we're talking about the perimeter of this, which would be the size of that shape, would be half. That would be true. And then it also says the area of the mid segment is half the area of the whole triangle. Well, uh, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and that would absolutely be true here too, because obviously the base is half and the height is half of what it used to be. Okay. So number four says for the following triangles, identify the figures. If the figures are congruent, if so, state what theorem is being used. So notice that we have some parallel sides. We have a congruent side. We always mark the shared side. It's congruent. We also have some alternate interior angles in this drawing. So we have an angle at a b at b a c that is congruent with angle d c a right and then we have another pair of congruent angles down here d a c again these are alternate interior angles is congruent with b c a right so now look at the top triangle let's pull our green color again so let's just look at the top triangle that's how we determine just look at one of the triangles okay guys so notice what we have over here. We have an angle, then we have a side, then we have an angle. So these are congruent by angle, side, angle, okay? Then the next one, again, we're going to mark our shared side. And this time, notice we have a right triangle, right? Two right triangles. And do we have the hypotenuse? We do, because this is the side opposite the right angle. This is the side right opposite the right angle. So these are our hypotenuses, right? And then we have a shared leg, don't we? So this is our leg right here. Okay, so this is HL. Now remember, just because it has a right angle doesn't mean it's HL. Okay, got to check it to make sure. This one says solve for the missing pieces of the triangle. So what we're going to be looking for here is we're going to be looking for the side AC. Let's go ahead and do that first. So um, we've got two of three sides in a right triangle. So we're going to use the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we know that we always label our hypotenuse first, so that's C. Right, and that's also our hypotenuse, so I'm going to label it both, okay? And so I'm going to label this side A and this side B, okay? And so we're just going to sub them in, okay? So I'm going to say AC squared is going to be equal to 8 squared, sorry, plus 8 squared is equal to 12 squared, okay? So we're going to keep working this. 
So this is going to be AC squared is equal to 64, sorry, plus 64, I keep doing that, plus 64 is equal to 144. Subtract the 64 from both sides. So that's going to give us AC squared is going to be equal to 80, right? It is. So then we got to take the square root of both sides, don't we? That's going to be our next step. So we're going to take the square root of this side because that was squared right there and take the square root of this. So now we have AC is equal to, so I'm going to give you both. So again, if we were to factor this, um, I, I would factor it by 5 first, okay? So if I did that, um, that would be the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, right? What is the square root of 16? It's 4. So 4 square root of 5 is what AC is. If it asks you for simplest radical form, and then just compute that if it doesn't, if it just says give it to like one decimal place. So that's going to be 8.9, okay? All right, so then um, we're going to now find angle A and then angle B, okay? So let's orient things from angle A. So if we're up here at angle A, we still have our hypotenuse right here. So 12 is our hypotenuse, right? So this is our hypotenuse again because it's opposite the right angle. And then we have our 8, which now is going to be our opposite side, right? So it's opposite that angle. So what ratio uses O and H? That would be sine. So to find angles, remember, we're going to do the inverse sine. So we're going to do sine to the negative 1 of our 8 divided by our 12. Put that in your calculator, and when you do, you're going to get that the measure of angle A is going to be equal to 41.8 degrees. Now we're going to do the other one using another ratio just to practice, okay? So on this other one, we're going to find angle B, okay? We're going to find angle B down here. So this time, we have um, our adjacent. Now, when we're talking about angle B, this is going to be our adjacent, isn't it? And that's because it touches the angle. So obviously, it can be the opposite side. The opposite side never touches the angle. This is still our hypotenuse, so that's going to use the ratio of cosine. So that's the measure of angle B. And so now we're going to do the cosine of the same exact ratio, okay? 8 over 12. And when we put that in the calculator, we get 48.2. Now, we could have subtracted the 41.8 from 90 and gotten the 48.2. We chose it to do we chose to do it this way because um, we're not using something we found to find the next measure. And it actually allows us to verify that we got the right answer because when we add these two together, they actually equal 90 degrees. And if they don't, we did something wrong, because obviously if we use 90 here, when we add A to B, we have to get 90, okay? Okay, so now we're going to do um, B. So on this one, we already have the 41 degree angle, so we're going to go ahead and solve for angle A first up here, okay? We're going to solve for this first, so obviously these two angles, A and B, because we already used the 90 right here, those two angles have to add up to be 90. So to find the measure of angle A, we're just going to do 90 minus our 41. So that's going to give us uh, 49 degrees, okay? So that's the measure of angle A. So it's up here at 49, okay? Now, now what we want to do is we want to find um, AB and CB, okay? So to find AB, we're looking for our hypotenuse, right? And then we're going to use the angle that we're given, okay? So we're going to use this angle because we don't ever want to use something we found. We want to use what we got first, okay? So if we're talking about angle B and we say, how does this 17 relate to the angle B? It's opposite. It doesn't touch that angle at all, so it's the opposite side. So, and we're going to find AB, and that's our hypotenuse, right? So we're going to use opposite and hypotenuse. That's sine. So we're going to say the sine of 41 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I'm just going to call this X, okay? So now what do we do when we have an X in the denominator? We swap places. These two things right here swap places, okay? So we're going to say x is equal to 17 divided by the sine of 41. Oh, and but let me remind you guys to make sure your calculators are in degree mode, okay? So when you do this, I got 25 point, is that 91? I hope that's 91. <laughs> x equals 25.91. So that's my hypotenuse, okay? Now I'm going to give this other one down here a different variable. So we're going to call this one y, okay, because now we're going to solve for um, cb, okay? So here again, we're going to use a ratio that we have. We're going to use angle b, 
um, and we're going to use the 17. So now we have the adjacent to that angle and we have the opposite. So we're going to use the inverse. We're going to use the tan, right? So we're going to do the tan of 41 is equal to the opposite, which is 17 over our y. So same process this time as we did last time. The y and the 41, tan 41 are going to swap places. So it's going to be y is equal to 17 divided by the tan of 41. Put that in your calculator. And when I did, I got 19.56. And that's going to be equal to our what? This x was equal to, let me go ahead and put this up here. This was a, b, right? Right there. And this one down here is going to be equal to c, b. Okay? Okay, so one of the things I want to talk to you all about is when I do the sine of one angle and say it's equal to the cosine of another angle, um, these angles, when I add them together, so this 2 theta plus 10 plus 30 theta plus 45, these have to equal 90, okay? So I'm going to change that theta to an x because I know y'all's brains work better with that. So I'm just going to change that to an x and we're going to say that theta is equal to x, okay? And we're going to work the problem. So 2 plus 3x is going to be 5x, right? 10 plus 45 is going to be 55. And that's going to be equal to 90. We're going to subtract 55 from both sides. So that's going to be 5x is equal to 35. So x is going to be equal to 7, right? Because we're going to divide both sides by 5. So when x is equal to 7 here, and then it's asking us for theta. But what if it was actually asking us for the angles? We're going to plug those back up in there. So that means we're going to go 2 times 7 plus 10. It didn't ask us for this, but we're going to do it anyway. So that's 14 plus 10, which is 24, okay? And then 3 times 7, 3 times 7 is 21 plus 45. Let me do this. 21 plus 45, that's 66, right? Now here's our check. If we add these two together, they should equal 90. And this is definitely 8990, okay? That's the way you check it to make sure you got the right answer for the variable, okay? All right, number seven says a man standing 15 feet from a rock climbing wall. He's standing 14 feet, okay, from the rock climbing wall. Um, when he looks up to see his friend ascend the wall, the angle of elevation, so let's just say the man standing over here, angle of elevation is 42 degrees, okay? How high is the wall? Um, how high up the wall is this friend? So that's what we're looking for, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at how these relate to each other, okay? So this is going to be a right angle there. So this would be our opposite side. This would be our adjacent side. Now, again, look where the angle is. We don't have the hypotenuse, do we? And we don't need it. So we're going to say the tangent of 42 is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, when we have the variable in the denominator, we're going to multiply both sides by what is in the denominator to get rid of it because it's being divided, so multiplication is the opposite. So literally do 14 tan, because um, these cross out, that's going to be what x is equal to, right? So x is going to be equal to 12.6 feet, okay? Just put that in a calculator just like that. 14 tan, 42. Don't even have to put the parentheses, okay? So the next one says the girl's looking out at an 18-foot high window and sees the dog. So the 18-foot high window, got 18 feet high. She sees a dog, the angle of depression to the dog. So she's up here, okay? So that means her line of sight is here. The angle of depression, it says, is 31 degrees, okay? So if this is 31 degrees right here, okay, and then we have a triangle that we have built, then we should know that these angles, this angle of depression up here, 31, is equal to this angle down here because they're alternate interior angles, right? We have a transversal. That is the hypotenuse. Um, and so this is also 31 degrees, right? And then, so then it says, what is the horizontal distance from the girl to the dog to the nearest foot? So that's what we're going to solve for there. So here again, we're going to use tangent because it, when we relate things to this 31 degree angle down here, this is opposite this is adjacent, right? So we're going to say the tangent of 31 is equal to 18 over x. Now this time we're going to swap that x and that tan 31. So it's going to be x is equal to 18 divided by the tan of 31. Go ahead and put that in your calculator. And for this one, you should have gotten 
30 feet, okay? It says round to the nearest foot, so we're going to round that number we got to the nearest foot, okay? So this next couple will say find x and y in the triangles below. So um, again, we're going to use ratios here. They're right triangles, so if we look at the 72 degrees here, then we have our opposite, and we have our adjacent, and we have our hypotenuse, right? So when we're trying to find x, we're going to have our adjacent and our opposite. So we're going to say the tan of 72 is equal to opposite over adjacent. Again, if we have the 3 in the denominator, we're going to multiply 3 times both sides, right? And that 3's go away there. So that means x is equal to 3 tan 72. You can put that right in your calculator, and you should have got x is equal to 9.23. Now for the other one, what we're going to do is we are going to... Um, we're looking for y. We have adjacent in hypotenuse. So this is going to be the cosine of 72 is going to be equal to the 3 over the y. And once again, um, because the, the variables in the bottom, we're going to swap places the cosine 72 and the y. So y is going to be equal to 3 divided by the cosine of 72. And when we do that, our y is going to be equal to 9.71. Okay. All right, the next one, again, we're going to orient things by what we have by that 25 degree angle. So this is going to be our opposite. This is going to be our adjacent. This is going to be our hypotenuse. So once again, if we're looking for x, it's going to be adjacent and uh, um, opposite, right? So that's going to be the tan of 25 is equal to x over 10. Going to multiply that 10 by both sides. And so now the 10's gone from there, so x is equal to 10 times tan 25. Um, and I got 4.66 for that. Okay, then we're going to do our other one. So now again, we're going to look at the 25 degrees, and we're solving for y. So now we have our adjacent and our um, hypotenuse. So that's going to be cosine again. So it's going to be the cosine of 25 is equal to 10 opposite. Uh, sorry, no, it's going to be x. My bad opposite x no wait i'm trying to find no, 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 no. yeah it's going to be 10 over our y okay so the y and the cosine 25 are going to swap again so y is going to be equal to 10 divided by the cosine of 25 so y is equal to 10 divided by the cosine of 25 so this is 11 0.03. And if you want to check these guys, plug them back in there and do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's a great way to find, um, to make sure they're correct. Now, notice this triangle. What kind of triangle is this? So we have two congruent sides, so that means we have two congruent angles, right? And if we have two congruent angles, it's got to be 45, 45, 90, right? So that means we're going to we're going to recognize first that this is a 45 45 90 triangle. We have one formula, which is h is equal to l times the square root of 2, okay? So what we need to do is label our h's and l's. So these are both l's, right? So when we find one, we have the other, and this is our h, okay? So what we're going to do now is plug in that h into that formula. So that's going to be that 18 is equal to I'm just going to say x square root of 2, okay? So remember, we got to divide both sides by the square root of 2 here. So now that's gone from there. But we can't leave it that way, right? Because we can't have a radical in the denominator. So we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And that's going to give us 18 square root of 2 over the square root of 4. Hopefully you know that square root of 4 is 2, so this is 18 square root of 2 over 2, and this reduces right there. You see that? 18 is divided by 2, so that's going to be 9 square root of 2. So that's going to be equal to both our x and our y, because we have two legs that are congruent, okay? All right, let's keep going. So the last three, I'm just trying to get this so we can just see these, okay? Um, and move this over just a little, okay? Um, now, I notice that this triangle in D is a 30, 60, 90. I know that because those two angles, the 60 and the 30, have to add up to be 90, okay? So on this one, that's the first thing you want to recognize. Again, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 
And we have two formulas for the 30-60-90 triangle. We have the h is equal to 2s, and we have that the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. So now let's label what we have. So this is our hypotenuse, right? This is going to be our short leg because it's opposite the 30 degrees angle. And then the 12 is going to be our long leg, right? So what we have is the 12. So we're going to use that first. So we're going to say 12 is equal to x square root of 3. Here again, we're going to have to divide both sides by the square root of 3. And we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by uh, the square root of 3 because that's how we get rid of it in the denominator. So we're going to multiply this by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So that gives us 12 square root of 3 over the square root of 9, which is going to be 12 square root of 3 over 3. And again, this can be simplified. So we're going to say that this is going to be 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this is x is equal to 4 square root of 3, right? So I'm going to put that back up here, 4 square root of 3. So that's our short leg. So how would we find the hypotenuse? We would multiply 2 times that, right? So y is our hypotenuse, so we're going to say 2 times 4 square root of 3. And hopefully you know by now that you're multiplying the 2 times the 4 because they're like terms. That's like a coefficient, okay? So y is equal to 8 square root of 3, and that is our final answer there for y, okay? All right, our next one. Oh, again, check it out. We have another 45, 45, 90 triangle. How did I know that? Because these two angles are congruent. That also means these two sides are congruent, right? So we already know what x is because x is equal to the 9 square root of 2 because both of these are our legs, right? So this is going to be equal to 9 square root of 2. And again, we have our one formula, h is equal to l square root of 2, right? So this is our hypotenuse, yes, okay? It's opposite the right angle. So we're going to say y is equal to 9 square root of 2 times the square root of 2. When I multiply these together, they go back under the radical. So y is equal to 9 times the square root of 4. So y is equal to 9 times 2. So y is equal to 18. Wow, same problem we did earlier right up here. Question is, did you recognize it? Probably not, but that's okay. All right, so our last one over here, we're going to solve for angles, x and y, okay? So to do this, we have three sides, and we could use any ratio we want, right, um, relative to the sides or to the angle. So I'm going to solve for x first. So we're going to find the measure of angle x, and that's going to be equal to, so what do you guys want to use? Let's just use opposite over, so this would be, let me see if I can move this over some, maybe a little bit. So this is equal to our opposite, and this is our hypotenuse, right? And this would be our adjacent to angle x, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we use opposite and hypotenuse, isn't that sine? So we're going to do the inverse sine, because we're looking for an angle, of 8 over 17. Go ahead and put that in your calculator. And if you do the second sine of that ratio, 8 over 17, that's going to be equal to, this is the measure of angle x, is going to be equal to 28.1 degrees. Now, we could, <clears throat> excuse me, we could use the same ratio for our y, okay? So when we're trying to find the measure of angle y, <clears throat> only we would call it cosine now, wouldn't we? Because now, if we're looking at angle y, this is our adjacent, right? Our hypotenuse stays our hypotenuse, doesn't it? So we could use sine again. So we could do the inverse sine of, sorry, inverse cosine, not sine, because now that's adjacent. So this is going to be the inverse cosine of 8 over 17, and that means the measure of angle y is going to be equal to 61.9. Now, how can we check this, guys? Does anybody remember? You got it. Add these two angles together. Do they equal 90? They do, and that's how you can check to make sure you got the correct answer.